Hey everyone, today's video I'm going to show you how I'm going to be making my bath bombs. And I will have the recipe in the description link down below, so if you're interested in making these yourself, you can use my recipe as a guide, or you can follow it exactly. I don't care. As long as you guys get in there and start making bath bombs and have fun, that's all I care about. But I thought it'd be a cool video to kind of show you my whole process from beginning to end, and maybe answer some questions that you guys might have if you are interested in making bath bombs yourself at home. So I hope you guys find this kind of video really informative and fun. And yeah, let's get right into it. So the first step, if it's a humid day, is to turn on your dehumidifier. Then I grab my handy drying trays that I got from the bath bomb press. And then I grab my colorants. Today we are making are really popular raspberry vanilla bath bombs and they are colored with a teal coloring. I get all of my bath bomb dyes from Crazy Colors. Um, the link to that website is down below. And then I grab the embellishments. For these particular bath bombs, I use just regular candy sprinkles that you can find um, in your local grocery store. Uh, they just dissolve quickly in the hot water and um, I found no issues using them in bath bombs. But one thing to note is if you do use them to make sure that you list all of the ingredients of those sprinkles in your labels. So now we're going to be measuring the first of many dry ingredients and that's our baking soda. Um, I use Arm & Hammer baking soda that you would use um, at, for baking or even cleaning your house. You can find this brand in your local grocery store. Then I use one of these small candy dishes, I think that's what it's called, but it's like a tiny little ramekin and I put just a little bit of water in that. And this is what I'm going to use to disperse my um, Crazy Color dye in. So when you order Crazy Color dyes, the order usually comes with a pink scoop. And so for my batch, because it's quite large, I filled this entire scoop up um, with dye and that's how much I usually use for my batch. To really dilute it, I use a metal skewer to give it a good stir. And I just make sure all of those dye specks are just fully mixed in with the water. To get that vibrant color, I then add a few drops of really, really hot water and that seems to activate it and make the dyes really, really bright and pop. I then add this water and dye mix straight into my baking soda. And I'm going to try to use every last bit of that dye, so I like to just dip it into the baking soda and just make sure it absorbs all of that water and all of that dye, and I will use my finger to completely scrape it out. I'm now going to take the baking soda and use my KitchenAid blender to mix it all up. I really think that blenders are one of the necessary pieces of equipment that you must have if you're going to make bath bombs because these guys are the powerhouse when it comes to mixing all of your ingredients and making sure everything is mixed in perfectly and evenly. Next up we have our other dry ingredients. I use cream of tartar, kaolin clay, and SLSA 
um, in my fat ball mix. So first up is cream of tartar, and I think this is a pretty great ingredient. Um, it really made a difference in my bath bombs. People use it to harden their bath bombs, and I find that it definitely helps with that because I had a recipe without it before, and they were nowhere near as hard. So this is definitely a great ingredient. Now for this next ingredient, SLSA is really, really fine and can really um, irritate your lungs if you breathe it in. So I always use a mask when I'm working with SLSA and I recommend you guys do the same because it is really, really irritating breathing it in. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it gets airborne so easily and this is what I suspect is the reason why it's so irritating to breathe it in. It just gets up in the air and into your lungs and makes me sneeze. So the reason why I include SLSA in my recipe is because this is the ingredient that causes the bath bombs to foam. And um, just a little bit of caution with SLSA, if you use too much, the bath bomb will just explode in a puff ball and it won't fizz. So um, use a small quantity of that if you want your bath bombs to fizz. If you find that your bath bombs are fizzing too fast, add a little bit more SLSA. But yeah, this is the foaming um, part of the bath bomb. Next up is kaolin clay. And like cream of tartar, it helps the bath bombs to harden. But kaolin clay also has so many skin benefits. So I love including this in my bath bombs. I think it adds a nice silky feel to the water and you feel it on your skin after soaking in it. So. Um, definitely a great ingredient to include. So for my bath bombs, I actually don't hand press them. I use the Bath Bomb Press, which is a Canadian company, and this press uses an air compressor in order to um, have the machine work so it's pretty industrial and pretty heavy duty but I do love it even though it was quite an investment I think it just helped my company so much um, in terms of helping me produce more bath bombs in a smaller frame of time harder bath bombs better quality bath bombs and um, just a really great piece of equipment if you are scaling your business and you're feeling like you are falling behind in production I think this this uh, press really, really, really helped out my business. So now we're going to be mixing our wet ingredients. If you know our company, you know that we use hemp seed oil in everything. So that's definitely one of the ingredients we use in our bath bombs. We also use polysorbate 80 and isopropyl alcohol. I hope I said that properly, um, but it's 99% uh, alcohol. And uh, the next step is mixing all of these ingredients together. Oh, and also we use shea butter in our um, bath bomb recipe. Polysorbate 80 is a great ingredient to use that will help um, your oils mix with water. So I did this off camera, but I measured out five grams of shea butter and I melted that in the microwave real quick. And that's what I will be adding the polysorbit 80 into. Next, we're adding our organic hemp seed oil. Ignore the container. I use these containers to, um, these olive oil containers to store um, 
my hemp seed oil, I get them in really large buckets and I just kind of reuse and recycle the olive oil containers that I get from Costco to make it easier for pouring. Now I add my alcohol. Um, I use 99% but I hear that 70% is just as good. Um, the lower the percentage, the more water is in it. So just keep that in mind. Um, I just like to use 99% because uh, it's the only type of alcohol that I've seen that I can get in bulk and I get my alcohol from Costco. So I take this mixture and I will add it directly to my baking soda which has been mixing this entire time. And look at that amazing blue color. This is why I love making our raspberry vanilla bath bombs because this teal color from Crazy Colors is just so vibrant and so amazing. I love it. It's such, such a great uh, dye. Highly, highly recommend. I add my citric acid last uh, so that my wet ingredients have a chance to blend with my baking soda and it doesn't cause the citric acid to react. So after adding our citric acid, I'm going to be uh, spraying the mix with a few spritz of water and so this is very uh, specific to how wet your mixture is. So when I make it I usually just do maybe four to five and then I let the blender uh, mix it for a bit and then I do another four to five sprays. And now we're gonna to get to the fun part, molding. I have these two pieces uh, for my mold and you can see on the inside of the round mold, there is a line and you wanna make sure that this line is on the bottom when you're putting um, the two pieces together. So I'm just gonna add the embellishments first and for this bath bomb I'm using candy sprinkles so I'm just gonna add a, a few to the bottom of the mold and then I'm going to start to pack in the bath bomb mix and I I pack it in pretty loosely I just grab clumps of mix and throw it in I don't pat down um, at all whatsoever and then I add a layer of embed powder which is a different baking soda to citric acid ratio so that it this color will shoot out of my bath bomb. So for this bath bomb, it's purple. And then I just continue to pack on the mix at the top and not too tightly because I want these bath bombs to float. And then that's pretty much it. So I'll place the filled mold in the small depression that's in the machine so that it lines up evenly with the press um, directly on top of that. And then there's two uh, buttons. One is a safety and the other lever up top, the black um, lever up there actually activates the mechanism to press it. So the first thing you'll do is you'll press down on the safety and then you will uh, press down on the black lever so that it comes down and I like to press it twice so I get two presses in. So what I did there was a test ball and I like to do one before I transfer the mix from the mixing bowl into my wider bowl so that um, I want to make sure that it actually presses together nicely um, and if it does come together nicely which it did for that test ball, then I will move the mix over from my KitchenAid bowl to a wider, shallower bowl so that it's easier for me to uh, put the mix into my mold. So there is a learning curve with the bath bomb press. You might find that 
your mixture that you've been hand pressing before that and it made perfect balls just doesn't work with the bath bomb press and you might have to tweak it a little bit. One great thing about this press is that it comes with a recipe that you can follow and that will work better with the press if your original one does not. So um, I found with my recipe it actually worked great um, with this bath bomb press so if you wanted to use mine as kind of an example uh, feel free to do that. But I did have some issues with this in the beginning of the summer and that's when I realized how important humidity is a factor, especially with the bath bomb press. So that's another thing is if you're having difficulties with this press is to make sure that your humidity is at the right point. And for the bath bomb press, it really likes the humidity to be at around 40. So that's just something to keep in mind. So these are just going to dry overnight and they'll be ready to package after 24 hours. Um, that's basically it. Uh, love the machine, love the bath bomb press, highly, highly recommend it. As you can see, the bath bombs are super smooth and they have this amazing bath bomb drying tray to dry on so they have the nice round bottoms and they don't get flat bottoms. So yeah, that's my entire process from beginning to end. And I hope this type of video was useful for you guys. And like I mentioned below, if you want to make these yourself, the link is down below. This recipe actually works with um, just regular hand molds. Um, I thought I would have to tweak with the recipe when I got the bath bomb press, but it worked either way. So yeah, uh, if you guys do attempt this recipe, let me know how it goes for you guys. And if you guys have any other questions, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments below. I will reply to each and every one. All right, have a good night, everybody, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.